Today is July 19th, Wednesday, 2017. It is day 181 in the Donald Trump White House regime. Today we find out that Trump's handler, Jared Kushner, will be testifying before the Senate Intelligence Committee on Monday. Now I must warn you, there's a lot of bad news for Donald Trump today. If you're one of those delusional Bible thumpers who is still supporting Donald Trump, well, I recommend that you turn the video off immediately and go pray to your God, Yahweh, that your children can get off of welfare. But if you can handle the truth, well, we've got a lot of truth today. Donald Trump is digging himself a hole bigger and bigger every day. This is alarming. But I must tell you this. As bad as Donald Trump has turned out, Hillary Clinton is much, much worse. Many people ask me, why did I support Donald Trump during the election against Hillary Clinton? And I said, it's very, very easy. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. So Hillary was so bad that we were forced to go with Donald Trump. Of course, he lied to us. We've kind of guessed that that was happening, but he proved it on day 77 and every day after that. He proved it that he was working for a foreign power. Now, how the leader of America can actually work for a foreign power, how a leader can pledge his allegiance to a foreign power, I don't know how that works. Trust me. Somehow I woke up in the last 50 years, I woke up and I wonder, how in the hell did this happen that the leaders of our country have to pledge allegiance to a foreign power? I don't think I'll ever understand that. And I'm sure the founders of America are rolling over in their grave as we speak. But, having said all that, I'm sure we still have one dedicated Bible thumper that has hung in there just to disagree with me. Well, I'm sure that Yahweh and BB is proud of you. Your children on welfare? Well, that's a whole different story. If we do a Google on Donald Trump today, we're back to the normal results. 362 million results in 0.77 seconds. So, what are, we, what are they talking about today? Donald Trump says he would have not hired Sessions if he knew what Sessions was all about. So Donald Trump is starting to figure out that just about everybody that surrounds him is a traitor. Just about everybody that Donald Trump has around him has brought him down. It took Donald Trump about six months to figure it out. I'm guessing that this is the textbook definition of a slow learner. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. You see, I think I warned Donald Trump six, seven months ago that these people were going to bring you down. He laughed at us because Donald Trump knows everything. He's a narcissist. And plus, their family. My family will never hurt me. Well, apparently, Jared Kushner may be the one who brought it to the attention of the authorities that Trump Jr. had the Russian meeting. Oh, isn't this soap opera getting very good? So we're basically to the main story today that Jared Kushner has to testify before the Senate Intelligence Committee on Monday. He's going to appear there before the authorities. Let me guess how it's going to go. Let me give you a little theater, a little prediction of how it's going to work. So first off, this Machiavelli Shakespearean dog and pony show starts off with Jared Kushner coming to the Senate in a large convoy of big black government vehicles. And his bodyguards escort him into the Senate, where he greets the senators and says, B.B. sends his regards. And so the circus begins. And it goes a little like this. The senators say, hello, Jared, would you like to have some coffee, tea, or a beverage? Okay, fine, let's get started. Oh, by the way, how is B.B. doing? Oh, that's great. Well, we're sorry that we had to bring you here. 
on such short notice. We know that you are a very, very busy man. Now, please understand, no disrespect meant here, but can you assure us of your allegiance to the club? Jared slowly shakes his head, yes. Okay, then, I guess that does it. Thank you so much for stopping by, Jared, and please send our regards to B.B. And then you can hear in the background a young senator's aide, and the aide says, Did you hear Kushner speak? Did you hear him speak? I never heard anything. And then the senator turns around to glare at the aide, and it's all done. The circus is over. God bless America. Now really, there's nothing to be alarmed at here. It's just a little prediction from your friendly wartime consigliere. But to think that it was just two months ago, yes, such a short time ago, just two months ago, that Sean Spicer was hiding in the bushes Jared Kushner was holding a fire sale on blood diamonds, and Donald Trump was off to Mecca to see the holy man. Wow. So much has so much water under the bridge in two months. All righty then, as Opie would say. Okie dokie. If there's any Bible thumper still with us, I'm afraid it gets worse. Yes. The story even gets worse for Trump. Apparently, his former campaign chief, Manafort, owes millions and millions of dollars to pro-Russia entities. Yes, it's unbelievable. He owed these monies through shell companies. They were shell companies that were linked to Manafort. And these business ventures were in the Ukraine. He worked for the Party of Regions, a Ukrainian political faction. I swear to God, I could not make this shit up in a million years. Donald Trump's former campaign manager worked for a Ukrainian political faction that has close ties to the Russian Kremlin. Again, I'm almost at a loss of words here, but we must continue. Who is the party of regions? Of course, they are a pro-Russia political party. Of course, they have close connections to Putin and the Kremlin. And apparently, Manafort and Trump are not the only ones who are tied to this. There are people in Brussels. I mean, the whole matrix is tied together. You know who you can track it all back to. I hope you know you I hope you know who we can track this all back to. But just in case you're a Bible thumper and you're new to the channel, of course it all started in 1913 with the Federal Reserve Banking Cartel. And yes, the IMF Bank, the IMF Bank still has an affiliation with Russia. Now, of course, Russia is trying to get out of the matrix. They're trying to go their separate ways with the Chinese Empire, which is about ready to spread their wings and flex their muscles, and they're about ready to take down the Federal Reserve Banking Cartel. But until that time, you know who you can always track it back to. Follow the money, Bible thumpers. Follow the money, and you may learn something. Let's go on. Okay, just a recap... Donald Trump's campaign manager, his former campaign manager, worked for a foreign political party, a Ukrainian political faction that had ties to Russia Putin. And I thought the covert foreign spy Sebastian Gorka was a nightmare. I mean, I gotta tell you, this just gets, keeps on getting worse and worse. This foreign takeover of what used to be America. I, I am at a loss of words. Why Americans don't understand that their country has literally been taken over by foreign powers. 
I, I just don't understand it. I am just here to report what I see. I am just here to report the truth. It was alarming to me when I found out that Donald Trump has foreigners surrounding him, Hungarians, people from Egypt, dual citizens from all over the planet, but yet he will not hire a real American. Oh, he has one, Steve Bannon, pretending to be an American nationalist. It really is troubling that Americans just sit by watching the Kardashians, self-medicating, while the people who control the country, the people who are writing the laws, the people who are sitting in the White House are surrounded by foreign agents, foreign spies. How in the hell did this even happen? Again, I'm at a loss of words. But if I had to guess, you're probably pulling your hair out right now. It was probably too much for you. What I have just told you is probably literally too much for you to handle. I know it was too much for me to handle. When I first found out that our country had been taken over by a foreign power, I was pulling my hair out just like you. So since this is too much, we must lighten the moment up a little bit. We're going to go to fake news. Why? Because I find it a little funny. I gotta be honest with you. I find this fake news so funny that I'm gonna to have to share it with you. I don't know if you know the crazy unhinged woman called Louise Mensch. Yes, she is the Brit. The crazy unhinged Brit. And she's back in the news today. Now you have to remember that the New York Times has actually endorsed this nutcase. Now, why is she in the news? What is she saying? She's claiming that the death penalty is being considered for Steve Bannon on charges of treason. Now, she has come out before and said some very, very crazy things. And whenever she does, I like to comment on it because, I, again, I, I find it incredibly amusing. Now, maybe that's what she's trying to do. Maybe she's just a comedian. But there are people out there in mainstream media who actually endorse her. CNN endorses her. MSNBC, Joy Reid. There are people out there who endorse this un unhinged nutcase. Look at this. Donna Brazil says, thank you for good journalism. If you're not laughing at that, you're not going to laugh at anything. If you call that good journalism. Now this is what she said. She claims that, um, maybe she's even throwing Donald Trump in there, that the death penalty is being considered for Steve Bannon and possibly and her sources. She has sources. Don't, don't even ask where these sources come from because we don't even want to go down that rabbit hole. But I do find this awful funny. She has done this before, trust me. I have made videos on her on the... I think on my Bravo Von Mueller channel, I have done videos on this unhinged woman from Brit, uh, the UK, before. Anyhow, that's the, this is the funny part of the video today, the funny segment. Now, unfortunately, we have to go to the sad segment of the video. This is the extremely sad part. They had a round table at the White House, apparently or in the government, somewhere. They had a round table made in America. There's 76,000 people who are going to lose their health care, possibly, but they are going to have a made in America round table. And when you see this round table, you are going to be extremely angry or sad or whatever. Now, on that table there, on that table is apparently the products that are still made in America. That alone should get you alarmed. But Donald Trump has called in 20, maybe the last 20 manufacturers left in America, for all I know. For anyhow, the only they could only fit 20 manufacturers in the room, and those are the products on that table. Yes, there's a flag, there's a cup, there's some silverware. They didn't mention it, I hope these are not the last 20 manufacturers in America, but I could not rule that out. This has to be the saddest thing you've ever seen in America. And Donald Trump is hosting the party. 
On that table are the products that are still made in America. Again, I don't make the news up. I just report it, and this is the sad news. Donald Trump welcomed 20 companies. Unbelievable. All I will say is this. Misallocated resources. Military-industrial complex and misallocated resources. I hope you get it. Because there are some people who cannot hold on to money. Even like Boris Becker. The man, what, made $100 million and he gave it away to Nigerians. That's probably, he could probably work for the military-industrial complex. You talk about misallocated assets. That's what brought America down. We literally put trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars down a black hole. And of course, Boris Becker, the tennis star, literally did the same thing. Now, I don't know about you, but if somebody comes to me and says, Bravo, I want you to invest $50 in Nigeria. I would probably say thanks, but no thanks. I would take one look. I would go on Google, and I would look at Nigeria. I would do a little bit of investigation, and I don't think I would put one wooden nickel in Nigeria. I mean, that's just me, if anybody even remembers what a wooden nickel looks like. Because now the military-industrial complex, they're, they're wasting trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars. And who knows what? It's not in America. That's the sad part today. I would not put one wooden nickel in Nigeria, but yet we have the military-industrial complex throwing trillions, not billions, trillions and trillions of American dollars over there Somewhere, way, way over there, 6,000 miles away, as our bridges are falling apart in America. Can, please, can somebody please explain this to me? Maybe a general, maybe a senator, maybe a congressman. Please, somebody explain this to me, because I'm just a hillbilly from the Ohio River, and I just don't understand it. Just don't understand it. Please, explain it to me. Well, I'm sure those rocket scientists over there at the Federal Reserve Banking Cartel, I'm sure they would be able to explain it to me. They're hitting the pause button. We're no longer going to raise the interest rates anymore because we are the money masters. We do as we choose. And then the Pentagon is furious that Turkey leaked the U.S. base locations in Syria. Turkey, I think we've talked about this. The new kids on the block. We have a new balance of power on the world stage. The Chinese-Russian-Persian alliance. And it's possible that the Ottoman Empire wants to join this alliance. And what will that do to Uncle Sam? It'll probably make Uncle Sam sad. It'll be make him sad that the dollar will no longer buy you a ham and cheese sandwich. But American peasants, don't worry, because the same thing happened in the Roman Empire. Funny how history sort of repeats itself. When the Roman Empire fell, yes, the Roman soldiers turned against the Romans. And they would go into the Roman households and the soldiers would take what they want. They have another name for it today. I think they call it civil asset forfeitures. How weird is that? 2,000 years later, after the Roman Empire collapses, the American Empire is doing the same thing, going into the households, taking what they want, and they call it civil asset forfeitures. And the Roman soldiers and the modern-day police state, unbelievable. 2,000 years later, and yet nothing has changed. Humans must be the most stupid creatures on the planet. I don't know. Am I wrong? Yes, the extension of the Roman Empire right here in America. Later on in this video, I have a short video on this Minnesota shooting. We'll get to that at the end of the video. Cosmo Di Nardo. Cosmo DiNardo admits that he's killed others. He's a psychopath. 
who smiles. He killed four people in Pennsylvania. Everybody knows who he is, but he, he claims he has killed other people. That does not surprise me. Now, they're still talking about the robot who drowned himself, the robot who committed suicide. Remember, a few days ago, I, I mentioned it. They promised us flying cars, and we got robot Steve. Rest in peace, because the Internet is still going crazy over the robot who committed suicide. So, let's see what else we can find. We'll wind this segment down. Donald Trump has changed his mind on health care three times in 36 hours. What does that tell you about your president? In 36 hours, he's literally changed his mind on health care three times. Again, okay, on this story here, the Australian woman. I made a video on my other channel, the Bravo Von Mueller channel. I made a video about this lady. She is the Australian bride-to-be who called 9-11, and then when the police showed up, one of the police officers was a man by the name of Mohammed Noor. I believe he is from Somalia, and he stuck his weapon out the window. He was in the passenger, passenger seat of the patrol car, and when he heard a loud bang, he put his weapon out the window and shot her. So I will leave you with that video. And, uh, but I will tell you this also. I do not discriminate against lying politicians. Because you know there was no, there was no large, huge factory that broke ground today that could employ 10,000 American deplorables. It did not happen under Donald Trump, and I can assure you it would not have happened under Hillary Clinton either. So here, I'll leave you with this video from my other channel. Thank you. The government knows me by my slave name. You know me as Bravo Von Eula. And today I present to you the Hillary Clinton butterfly effect that has implications that stretch from Somalia to Australia, even to a town near you in America. So, without further ado, I give you the witch, Hillary Clinton. Yes, we came, we saw, <laughs> he died. <laughs> did it have anything to do with your visit? No, I'm sure it did. In her own words, Hillary described it best how she and Obama did business for eight years. You see, they had secret wars, secret wars in Somalia and many, many other places. Have you ever heard of the PMOs? political military officers. You see, when these secret wars don't go so well, they bring the military officers into America, and they give them a job. How nice. As you and I are out of work, we have no job, we have no pension, and we have no hope. But these foreign military officers and their families come to America, and we give them everything on a silver platter. Oh, do you need a job? Yes, here you go, a big government job, carrying a badge and a gun. Please behave yourself in America, won't you? So you ask yourself, is this Obama-Hillary Clinton butterfly effect coming to a town near me? Well, let's take a look. What are the implications of eight years of Obama and Hillary? What if they brought in many people that you're not aware of from foreign countries who not, do not really understand our laws and they think that they can fire out the window of a patrol car. I repeat, they actually fire a weapon out the window of a patrol car. So let me see if I have this correct. You hear a loud bang. You point your weapon out the window and shoot a lady, I repeat, 
you hear a loud bang, you get scared and point your weapon out the window at a woman who's just about ready to get married. So what are we talking about here? The first generation of Hillary Clinton, Obama soldiers that have been brought into the country. So you really do not need to ask yourself, what the implications are of the Obama-Hillary Clinton butterfly effect because it's coming to a town near you. We came, we saw, <laughs> we died. <laughs> did it have anything to do with your visit? No, I'm, I'm sure it did. <laughs>